Hopefully my computer will keep up. I've got it doing about a million things at once now. Okay, right, so we're finally at the point where we're going to start doing the Pac-Man game now. Now, Pac-Man is quite a complicated game we're going to do. I'm going to take the usual approach and I'm going to show you the basics all the way through. By the end, if you just do along with the stuff I'm doing, you'll have a really basic Pac-Man going on. But what I'm wanting you guys to do, obviously, is more than that. I'm wanting to improve on it. I want you to add your own bits, try your own changes to it, um, make your own twist on it. That's what makes this good. There's loads of areas where you can expand on this and this is how you're going to get good at this stuff is by experimenting and trying your own stuff. So I'll show you uh, the one we made, the one I made a couple of years ago. Uh, last year's didn't get finished because lockdown started, last year's lockdown started right in the middle of it. But a couple of years ago, um, did this one. This is called Pack Miles because at the time of doing it, my son was four um, and he were, he loved Pac-Man. You know, he couldn't play it at all because he wasn't good enough and he got eaten by ghosts instantly and upset him. So I said I was going to make a Pac-Man that was much easier so he could play it and then decided to put him in it as well. So this is um, Pack Miles as we called it. So Ali's his cousin, so you could choose you want to do one or two play games, let's do one player. And then it's a sort of Pac-Man like thing. He says power that turns into Miles and he thunder around eating stuff. And there's a bunch of different level layouts. The score was kept quite badly at the top. The ghosts, the green one followed you, all the rest of the ghosts move randomly so it's much easier to keep away from them and do right and when he turned into Pac Miles he was much faster than the rest. So that was that and I'm going to show you most of the way to getting something very similar to this. Okay, right so there's a couple of new skills we're going to learn as we go along. I'll, I'll do them as part of this rather than doing it in advance. Um, the first of these is that we need to be able to read from a text file because the way our map is going to be, maps are going to be done is if I go into um, here the maps are all stored as text files, with the numbers being the type of tile that that one is. So a 1 in this case is a wall, a 2 is a dot, a 3 is a power pill, um, 7 I think is a ghost bay, 6 is possibly the starting point for Pac-Man, something like that. So we have a text file all set up like that, and then we've got a folder of those, and all those levels become available in the game. So what we're going to do for the first couple of lessons is set up a map class. Now I've got a um, set up to talk us through the map class here. Right, now that's going on top of there, so let's just move that forward a bit. Okay, so the map class is going to be a class which does three or four things. So we'll probably add a couple of more things as we go along, but initially it's going to be able to do this. It's going to load a map from a text file and store it internally. Because obviously we don't want to read from the text file every time, so we'll read that, that series of ones and zero, store it as a 2D array in the map class so that it can very quickly access it. It needs to be able to return the tile at any given position, return the number of dots remaining, and remove a dot when eaten. So that's what the map is going to be in charge of. Knowing what is in each location, be it a wall, a space, a dot, or anything like that, um, and keep track of how many dots are left and reduce and remove them when Pac-Man goes over them. Well, well, it's told to rather when Pac-Man goes over them. It won't necessarily have an idea of where Pac-Man is, it'll just be told to do it. And yeah, and the map is going to look something like this. Now that's I've done this one and colour coded it because it makes it much easier to design. So I did this in Excel, just set up a um, rule so that ones change for a certain colour, twos change for another. It was then much easier to create the map by putting the numbers in and then I could export that as a text file and then I've got my map ready to go. And that's essentially what it's going to do. So first thing, you guys need to have a text file ready for a map. Now initially don't worry about making it massively complicated, I mean that's about as close to the original one as we're going to get with the limitations of what we're making, but we can make a much simpler one to begin with. So like everyone, we'll give you about 5-10 minutes, you just need to make a map text file that we can use as part of the program we're about to make. Um, if you want to go down the Excel route and make it so it's pretty like that, that's absolutely fine. 
Um, one thing I'd also suggest is I've done it this way using numbers uh, for each of these. It was pointed out to me last year that it would make more sense to use characters because of this way I'm limited to no 10 different things. I've only got 0 to 9. After that I need to use double digits and I can't do that. So if I want to have more in it, like some people decide they want to have different types of walls as different numbers, then you probably want to use characters. So it might be A, B, C, D, etc. Then you've got a far greater array of them. So I'll show you an example one. We'll get rid of yeah. So that's an example of what the text file ends up looking when we haven't got the colour coding on. So I want you guys all to create a text file just in um, Notepad or something like that of a potential map. You're deciding your own system. You can decide that uh, W is a wall, um, B is a background, D is a dot, P is a power pill or whatever or numbers if you want to use it. We'll get that set up. We'll give you about five minutes on that and then once we've got that we can then start writing the method that will load that text file into memory. Sir? Yeah. What happens if you're on Mac? Um, then use a whatever the text editor is on Mac. Then get a right. Windows. <laughs> I don't think you need to buy a whole new computer just to access Notepad. I'm not sure what the one on the Mac is, but there is a simple text editor on Mac as well. It will do exactly the same thing. Okay, thank you. No worries. Right, if everyone's happy with that, I'll leave you for five minutes while you make that, and then we'll Sir, start making it. Yeah. Is all right if you go back to the PowerPoint to show us like what the numbers mean or like the values? Well, them. those are ones I just made up. So, um, give me a second. This PowerPoint, by the way, is on the VLE if you want to load it. So, let me just get that screen back up. No, that wasn't quite right. Yeah. So yeah, that was those up there are what I did. I had zero being an empty space, uh, one being a wall, two being a dot, three being a big dot, four being a ghost gate, that's a bit the ghost can pass through to exit the gate but Pac-Man can't, five being a warp point, so when you hit one five you go to the other five the other side, that makes you move across the map, uh, six being where Pac-Man will start, and seven being the ghost bay where the ghosts start. Nice. I like the idea of using um, dots and hashes and stuff because it's quite easy to see from the text file what it will look like. That's not a bad idea at all. So I'll be making a very simple one to begin with because this is going to be used initially for testing to see if it displays properly and all that sort of stuff so we don't need to be too wound up about it but let's have a nice simple one so I'll get one made as well. Right so in fact I'll do mine straight into here. So I'm going to make a new project. And in there, close all this stuff. In here, I'm going to make a new. new text file. And I can put, say, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do eight across and eight down for this one. Sir. 
So are we doing it simple, just like the walkways and the like exterior? Yeah. Initially, don't forget, the whole idea is once we've made this, you can then make as many maps as you like and throw it in, it'll work with all of them. For the time being, we're just making a nice simple one we can use for testing, because we're going to try loading one and getting it to display. So have a nice simple one that you know what it'll look like, and that's all we need to do for the time being. You can eventually make a better one later. So I think that... Okay, thank you. That'll do for mine, that's all I'm going to use to begin with. So I'll save that in Pac-Man 2021 and this will be, let's call it level one. Okay, and yeah, there it is in there. If you've done it and saved it with Notepad somewhere else, you can just drag that file onto this top level bit here, this Pac-Man 2021. Not the source folder or any of those and actually top level one and it will put it there and then it'll be able to be easily read by the program the way that I'm going to go about doing it. Okay, once you've got a file ready to go and stuck in Eclipse up there like mine is, could you just stick a message in saying done or something like that so I can see when we're ready to move on. Where did you say to import it to in Java? Right, if you've done it and saved it as say just a text file in Notepad, all you need to do is from Windows Explorer drag it onto this part up here, this, um, oh, hang on, make sure got the right mouse pointer. This part here, Pac Man 2021. If you drag it onto there, it'll probably pop up with a box asking if you want to copy it to there, say yes, and then it will stick it down here. As long as it appears down here under the source thing, then we're ready to go. Should I make a new Java project? Yeah, make a brand new Java project, call it Pac Man. Good to you, why? New Java project or just new project? Java project. It's always a Java project. Has anyone made a level yet? Okay, right now it doesn't need to be anything complicated. Keep it nice and simple, we just need enough to test. Right, 
Well, don't worry about that yet. You can do that later on, but for the test purposes, I just want a really nice simple one. Just make one that you know roughly what it'll look like, so when we test it, you can see if it's displaying correctly. Mr. Gray. Yeah. Uh, so, should we remove, like, the public class? I'm not sure you know what, what I mean. mean. Well, oh, you mean the public static void main thing? So, no, like, oh. uh, so you know when you make a new class, should yes. I delete the public class and whatever right. I named we it, we and then just put the level? Right, we haven't made a class yet. If you wanted to do a text file in here, all I did was click on Pac-Man 2021, right-click on it and go to New, and then down here, Untitled Text File. Oh, I, stick up, oh, I stuck it in I it. I did that class. as a class. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably best to delete the class. Well, copy the text out, delete the class, and put it in as a text file. Yeah, if it goes in as a class, it will want it to be valid um, Java, and it'll red underline everything and complain. So this is just a plain text file. This is going to be read by the class. We haven't actually written any code yet. So I should have oh. made that clearer. Yeah, thank you. This wasn't meant to be the bit we get stuck on. Right. Okay, I'll go through the whole process of making a level again, completely from scratch for those that are struggling. So if you watch this, so it, again, I can do this in a minute. So if you keep up with it, you'll be done in a minute as well. So we right click on our new project, go to new untitled text file, Put in a level, so I'm just going to put one, 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 one. Only five by five. This one, one, naught, 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 one, one, naught, one, naught, one, one, naught, 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 one, 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 one. So this is going to be an outside wall and a dot in the middle, and that's all it's going to be. So when I'm done with that, I can save it. So hit the save button or Control S, and say that you want to save it in your Pac-Man 2021 or whatever you've called it project, and give it a name. So I'll call this one level two and there it is it'll appear down there so just something as simple as that we can all do that very quickly so that we can move on and test it and obviously in your own time you can be making a much more complicated level but as long as if it loads this level correctly it'll load your next one correctly as well so i posted my level what do you think of it very good yep i'll be able to find test it's uh it's a key by the looks of it. Is it? Yeah, I think it'll look like a key. Yeah. No, no, it's got, to balance no, it. so it's got the some ones up. going down the other side as well. Yep, that's fine. All right, so let's get on with actually making the map class now that's going to try and load that. And probably won't get around this lesson, but hopefully by the end of next lesson, we'll be able to display that map very rudimentarily on the screen and see how it does. Right, so make my new class, so make sure I'm clicked on the Pac-Man 2021 project and hit the new class button. This one's going to be called Map. Um, don't need to tick public static void main, we'll make a runner later on. Finish that. And here's my first one. Okay. Now what Map is going to do all we're going to focus on today is importing that text file and getting that stored into a 2D array. Because whenever we're drawing the map, we need to know what is in each location so we can draw the right thing. And we don't want to have to read the text file every time, so we want it to be stored in a 2D array so we can very quickly read it. So first thing, I'm going to make a 2D array as an attribute but I don't know the size of my array to begin with because it depends on the text file. So I've got two levels here. My first level is eight by uh, six. The second one is five by five. So I can't declare the size of my array until I start loading the text file. So I'm gonna declare the array, but not put any more information than that. So I'm gonna say private, um, yeah, I'm gonna store it as an array of characters even though I'm using one, two, three, I'm still going to do its character so I can use other characters if necessary. Private character to the array uh, 
Right, do that. I'm not going to put equals new map or anything. I'm not going to make it because I don't know the size yet. So I'm just going to declare it as an attribute and I've had signed no, nothing to it yet. Okay, so that's my first attribute and the main one for map. And then I'm going to make my load map uh, method. So So this is going to be my method. What this is going to do is load the map taking a file name as its um, parameter. And it's going to then going to look for that file name. By default it will look here where these ones are. We'll look for that one and then we're going to read through it. So the method for doing this is in well, in typical Java fashion to be honest when it comes to reading things externally. It's, it's annoyingly complex. We need to take, get a file reader and wrap a buffered reader around it. The file, re file reader will just directly access the file, but getting, say, a whole row of characters out of a file reader is really, really fiddly and difficult. So if we make, use something called a buffered reader, these are all in java.utils, these are all things that are built in, what that will do, it will wrap around the file reader and will return it in line by line rather than individual um, bits from it which makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to say um, I'm going to put that. Uh, all these will need importing so we'll import file reader from java.io Import buffered reader from Java.io. Oh, I missed that. They kept on in that. Right. Okay. Now that text is right. Don't worry about the red underline just yet. This is going to lead into our sort of new skill that we need to know about, which is error handling. So that is the right line. It will make a buffered reader and as its input it will take a new file reader. So it will make a file reader which reads this file that we've passed to it and then that will be passed as an input to a buffered reader. It's an awkwardly complex way of doing it but in the end our reader will read line by line from this text file. That's the upshot of it. But So my string file name's red. Yep, yeah, so is mine. Oh, you mean, you mean up here? Yeah. Do I have to write the whole code out for it to be unread? Um, well, so it depends. If you've got, if that bit's missing, it'll be fine. You may need to have all the brackets in place and the open braces and close braces. Yeah, it's probably, if you haven't got the open close braces, it will probably be complaining that it needs to be declared abstract. Okay. All right, I'll try it. So stick the braces it in. It does uh, stay red until you stick the braces on. Yeah, it's yeah. Without the braces, it's what's called an abstract class. It's a class that you're claiming that if someone else overrides it, they have to implement it. And because this isn't an abstract class, it's not happy with that. So stick the braces in. It knows it's a real class, and it'll stop complaining. It's still red. Wait, do I have to put? The whole code in, like the buffer. I wouldn't have thought so. Do you, can you share your screen? Can I have a quick look? All right, I'll screen share. Hello. Yeah, I'm having a quick look. Uh, did I spell something oh. wrong? You stick, you stuck you a semicolon, semicolon at the end. Yeah, well spoke, Will. You put a semicolon at the end. That shouldn't be there. Oh, that. I see. There you go. Okay. That's that it. Fixed it. Awesome. Thank you. So if you can unshare your screen, screen again. Oh. Um, it's the button next to leave. It's there. We are. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, hopefully we're all there. I'll keep going. Now we'll notice. This bit is red and underlined. And if I hover over it, it says unhandled exception type file not found exception. So I need to say a bit about exceptions. 
Exceptions are Java's way of handling errors, of handling runtime errors specifically. Obviously, syntax errors, it won't even compile and run, but runtime errors can happen. Now, I'll, I think I, yeah, I'll demonstrate a runtime error outside of this context in a way that's probably a bit easier to follow. So you don't need to do any of this, it's just worth watching to see what's going on with this exception. So I'm just gonna make a new, um, whoops, a new Java project. this one and in here I'm going to make a new class I'll just do this a public static void main okay so in here I'm going to do something pretty simple so I'm going to say int um, so string so it's alright if you go back to the other class a second please don't worry about it, just watch this the time being. I will come straight back to that. I just want to make sure everyone's following about the error correct, error detection problems. So if do string um, word oops, equals 57, and then I'll say int num equals integer dot parse int word. And then this is now print line num. So what this does, integer.parseInt is a built-in method that will take a string and will try to convert it to an integer. So that 57 is stored as a string. By using integer.parseInt, it will convert it to a number. So if I run it, and sure enough, 57 down there, no problem. But if that, instead of saying 57, said ABC, now we're going to have a problem because it's going to try and parse a b c into a number and that obviously can't happen because there are no number no digits in there so that's going to be a runtime error because there's there's nothing wrong with any of this code because the whole point of inject parsing is it takes a string as its input and that is indeed a string until it's running we don't know whether that string is valid to be run so when we do run this we get a runtime error and a bigger so we can see it there we go. And down here, we get this runtime error, the red text I'm sure plenty of us have seen before. And it says, exception in thread main, java.lang.number format exception. That's the type of exception it's just thrown for input string ABC. And it tells us where it is. So if I click that, it tells us it's on this line that it's run. We've encountered those a fair bit. But rather than having that red text, we can actually deal with them. We can anticipate that there's going to be an exception under certain circumstances and actually deal with it in code rather than just have the red text there. To fix this one, what I would do is around this, I would say try and put anywhere that this exception can happen inside a try. So I put try, open brace and close bracket. And then that line here where this can happen is now in there. So if anything throws an exception within a try block, it will jump down to the catch block below where we tell it what type of exception to catch. So this is gonna be, as it says down there, a number format exception. We have to give it a name so we can use it. And then we can tell it what we want to do in this case. So I could just do, oops. I could just do something like that. It says out that's not a number. So when I've done this try and we have run this, now instead of getting my red text, oh, still there in there apparently. Ah, because num is actually defined in there, so I'd need to define. In fact, what I'm going to do is stick that in here because I would only want that to run if it's worked. So if there's an error and this line, it will jump down here, it will never try and output it either. So we run this, and now it says that's not a number, rather than getting that red text. If I put that back to being a number, it runs fine. So that's the idea of try and catch. We say try, we do something that might throw an exception, and if it does throw an exception, we catch that exception and deal with it. Now, the worst, I always delay showing people how to do this until one of the last projects we do. The reason is, is because some bright spark, and in this case, it's definitely going to be Sam, 
will come up with the idea of going, oh, I can make sure that my code never throws an exception. What I can do is put try and put my whole code in it, and then go catch exception and put nothing in there. That way, any runtime error is caught, nothing happens, and we move on. And then that seems to fix problems. Of course, the issue is, if it's throwing exceptions you weren't expecting it to catch, uh, to throw, then you're never going to know about it. So you can be, it can be very dangerous to not deal with exceptions properly. So don't just do straight up catch exception. Even though a lot of examples you'll find online will use that because it's the quickest solution. Put the type of exception you're expecting to find. So if an unexpected exception is thrown, it's not just eaten up by your catch routine and you don't know why things are going wrong. So we'll leave that as a proper code. So if I go back to my map, and in here it's saying unhandled exception. So integer.parseInt is a program that is a thing that can throw an optional exception. It will run just fine without it being caught. However, this buffered reader is set up, or the file reader rather, is set up so that it requires you to catch an exception. It won't run unless the exception is dealt with. So we have to deal with it in this case. So I'm going to stick this inside a try. And then I'm going to catch the exception it told us about, which was the, um, oh, I can't remember what it was called. So I've got an error again. Okay, let me just go through this and we'll have a look. So if I hover over that, file not found exception, I couldn't remember what it was called. So let's put that back in and then we'll catch that one. And for time being, I'm just going to leave myself a simple message. So I'm going to leave myself a more sensible one there. I'll need to import that because that's in the Java.io package. So that's all imported there. Uh, that's capital M. So hopefully now, if I try and load a... Um, file and it's not found, it will catch that error and jump down here will just say unable to load file file name. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, to test this, so let's have some testing going on here. So what I'm going to do here, rather than have a separate runner, to make it a bit easier to test, I'm going to add a temporary um, system to out, uh, sorry, of public static main, vo main vo public static void main in here that will just run the load map. So I'm going to say public static void main string args, which is the standard thing we have to do if we want this to be a runnable class. And all that's going to do is say um, make a map and then say bob dot load map and I'll give it level one as my file that I created up here. So I can test that, we'll run it, and if all goes well I'll get nothing down there. That's good. Now if I give it a file I haven't yet made, so that level hasn't been made, and I run that, hopefully, yeah, unable to load file, level that. So that seems to be loading level one correctly. Obviously we'll put some more testing stuff in here in a minute to make sure it does that. But for time being, could you all just try that out? See if you can get yours to throw an error if you load a file that you haven't put here. And get rid of that now. And just do nothing if it successfully loads it and try that. So, Danny, if you've still got the error, you can show your screen and I'll have a look. Uh, I think I fixed the error. Great. Well uh, done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's still there, actually. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look, then. Do you want me to show Yeah, it? Yeah, let's have a look. Okay. You haven't got a space between new and buffered reader. Right, TY. That's it. It's all typos so far, which are the best type of mistakes to be making. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, anyone else having any issues or is this working for everyone now? Yes. I have something, but I need to switch devices. Okay. This is so much easier, I can I just wander around the classroom and have a look at your screens. Right, so so are you on Teams on your phone and using the computer separately? You can point yeah. you can point your phone camera at the screen if that's easier. Yeah, I could. <laughs> I might do that. So uh, I think there's another problem occurred. Okay. Let's see if Daisy can share hers, then we'll have a look at yours. Oh dear, Harry is struggling with internet. Right. Well, the advantage of this, the reason why I'm recording this whole thing is I will stick this up on YouTube afterwards so you can watch this back and try and catch up with it, Harriet, and hopefully that'll help. Right, Daisy, are you loading Teams on your computer or are you just going to point the camera at it? Or is it all working now? I'm, I'm going to do it on my computer. Okay. But Right, while Daisy's switching it, Dan, if you've still got a problem, you can show your screen. Uh, what did you do with the runner? Or did you include it in the right, like, Mac I, I haven't made a runner. I've added a public static void main to this. This is temporary. This is this bit here is going to be deleted. I've only put that in oh. there be so that allows Map to be a runnable class. That having a public static void main is what makes it runnable. So putting that in there means when I run Map, it will make a new map and it will load a level. When I'm finished with testing this, I'm just going to delete that because this doesn't need to be a runnable class. It's just there while we're doing it. Uh, Wait, so what did you do with the runner? The runner the runner was only for the um, error demo that I was showing. I haven't got a runner in this project. Oh. We will do Should I delete later. it then? <laughs> yeah, that one there, I did say you just need to watch that one. That was just where I was demonstrating how exceptions work. We don't need that. Right, uh, Will's got an error. Let's have a look. Must declare a named package because this compilation unit is associated with the names module Pac-Man. Okay, it looks like How have you set yours up? Have you just have you just made it as a Java project? Yeah, I think so. Are you able to are you able to share your screen? Uh, I can do Yeah, let's have let's have a look. It's, it's something to do with the way the project's been set up. That because it shouldn't be requiring it to be in a package. I don't know if I am. Right, let's have a look. All right. So, what is module? Ah, oh, what's that module info? Oh, we just got Minecraft. Minecraft up. That's fine. Um, so down the side under the package explorer, what's that module info dot Java? Wait, what do you say, sir? On the package explorer on the left. Yeah. What, what's module info for Java? Don't know. That was a set from the start. Um. Can we just get rid of it. Yeah, I have no I idea why that's. It. it didn't work. Yo. Once because it just sort of went there. Yeah, it's made a module. I'm not sure why. Maybe newer versions. Uh, of yeah, right click and just get rid of it. it. Alright, now do I try again? Yeah. I wonder if newer versions of Eclipse are automatically inserting it. Yeah, they do. Ah, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I think it might. Right. When well, you make a point, now, now you have to don't make a new one. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so I'll get a newer version of Eclipse. I'll have a look at that because I'm still using an older version that doesn't do that yet. Um, okay. Alright, now it's the same. I've got the wrong map, but it's fixable.
Okay. So is there, is everyone else at a point where they've got this code, they've tested it, and it seems to be working? So if you give it a file my, that you did not... Okay, if it's not working, if you're struggling with it, share your screen, I'll have a look. It says unable to load file, comma, level one. Yeah, that's that's what it should do because that's what you've told it to do in the exception. So if you it does, yes. Okay. So if you type the name of a file that is there. Have you typed in the one up here that actually is a real file? I've got an untitled what is it the one for the map? With the like ones and zeros, you mean? Yeah. Whatever you've called your file. So if you look at mine here, so I've got a file called level one, another file called level two. These are two I've made. So level one is that, level two is that. And I've got them here. So I'm trying to load one of those. So in my map thing, I've set up here bob.loadmap level 1 because level 1 is this file here. It's the name of that. And therefore it's loaded. If I give it to a level that's not there, it will say unable to load file, which is correct. We want it to do that. How do you get your level 1 and 2 under the map? Is that what we have to do? Yeah. Do you just right click? Right. Map and if, you've, if you've saved it somewhere else, just drag it onto the Pac Man project up here. Just drag it from a window onto the top of there, and it will insert it in the right place. So if I did it on Notepad, I just yeah. Let's um, see if I can do it here. Um, let me just turn this chat on. No, for but a what I want to do, I just want to like just copy and paste it from no, the Notepad. We can't copy thing. and paste. Um, what well, what well, easiest way to do it? So if I've made a new text document here, I've called it Level Three, for example, and I've got it saved. There, so let's put something in it. Not one, not one, not one. It's a rubbish level. So save that. If I want to use that, all I have to do is take this level three and drag it onto Pac-Man. Say copy the files, and there it is down there. Oh, okay. So just drag it onto there. I just made a new untitled document on the like, yeah, right click. If you Pac want to type it directly into Eclipse, you can right click new untitled text file. If you've already saved it as something else, just drag that file on top of there. Either way, it will appear down there. That's why I was saying, can you copy and paste it? If like you want that? to, but that seems like the worst of both worlds. If you've already made it, just drag it onto there. I guess. All right, I'll try. Thank you. What, what do you actually see if it works? Nothing. Uh, we're we're okay, testing. Right, we're testing whether your error catcher works. So if you put in a file that you haven't imported, you'll get an error. All right, Daisy, let's have a look. If you put in one that works, it won't do anything. So, new file reader. Right, you haven't imported file reader yet, so just hover over file reader. Um, so oh, hot, there we are. Import oh. file reader. Was that it the whole time? That was it. Oh, thank you. No worries. So, if you hear that cross, that's it. Okay, are we there yet? Right, I'm assuming that's where we're at. Okay, how long have we got? Right, this is going to be so slow doing this remotely. This is so much quicker when we do it in a classroom. Oh well, we'll get through it. Right, so we've created a connection now to one of these files, whichever one we've given there. So it's managed to do that, and if it's unable to do it, it throws an exception. Now, the rest of this code So the rest of this code um, is going to go within the try. The reason is, I'm not even though that's the only part that can throw an error, I'm not going to carry on from down here because if it does throw an error, there's no point continuing with the rest of the program. We might as well stick all the code in here so if there is an error, it throws that exception and then doesn't do anything. Because there's no point now trying to read that file if it was never able to open it in the first place. So all of our code is going to go in the try. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to try and find how wide my map needs to be and how tall my map needs to be. So first of all, I need to read a single line and count how many characters are in it. At this point, I'm going to assume that this has been made correctly, that each line has the same number of characters. Um, it's a dangerous assumption, and we, you probably at some point might want to build in some checking so that it checks if each line is the same length and throws a different exception if it isn't. But for time being, I'm just going to assume that's the case. So to Mr. read it... Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, sorry to interrupt, but um, it's still saying uh, unable to load file even when I like copied and pasted it. Okay, let me have a quick look at the desktop and finish this bit off. This should be a quick fix. All right, thank you. Right, that's the, the level is inside your source um, folder. So drag that level one and drag it on top of the Pac-Man folder. Up, uh, up, up that one. Down, there, down. Just there. here? Yeah. Just and it's yeah. that? Yeah, I get that and go on that. Um, oh. Enter a new name, doesn't matter. Just, you can call it whatever, doesn't matter. I've just got level one. Yeah. All right. Press OK. Okay. I know. Oh no. No, it is on the right place. That's right. Just delete that second one. Okay. This one. So that should be directly under source. No, it is in the right place. My mistake. Yeah, you can delete that new one that's been made. It's not going to do anything. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Oh no. Sorry, I, I was. I'm going way too complicated. Yeah, that file's called level one dot txt. So not level right. one. So that's right. Your code's done the right thing. Go back to your code. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Now down on the yeah. bottom line, you've asked it to load a file called level one. Your file isn't called level one. It's called level one dot txt. So, oh, it's been strange. Okay. So if you put dot txt in there and you run it this time, it shouldn't show the error at all. Oh no way. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. So it shows your program okay. works. You didn't have a file called level one, so it told you it was unable to load it. You did have a file called level one dot txt, so it ran. That's exactly what it should oh. do. Oh. Okay. Okay. All so right. if you unshare, I can. Get back to this. Okay, thank you. No worries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a l the first line in the thing. The way the buffered reader works is it keeps a read buffer that's at the start of the file. When I've done a read line, it will then go to the next one and read the next one. So you can't jump to a certain line. It will just keep reading until it reaches the end of the file. So I'm going to say um, string line equals reader dot read line. Okay, that should read a line, and it can potentially throw an I.O. exception. Reading from files is full of exceptions that can be thrown. So if it's unable to read that line for whatever reason, it will throw an O exception. So I'm going to catch that as well. Drive that IO. There we go. So I've now read that. So I've got two catches going on a catch that checks for a file not found exception if it was not able to read it, and a catch that catches an IO exception if it's unable to read some text from that file. So it's read that line. So now I want to find out how wide my map is going to be. So I'm going to say int width equals line dot length. So how many characters that is, is a line. In fact, to test this at this point, I'm just going to say, this is purely testing stuff, um, line and... So we'll check this. Now if this works, it should read the first line from level one, which is a whole bunch of ones, and it will read it as being eight characters in length. So let's see if this works now. There we are. It's read the first line, establishes eight characters in length. So we know the width of our map is going to be eight. So I take that to test lines out. So now I need to find the height of the map. Now that's more difficult because it will. All I can do is keep reading until I reach the end of the file. Um, so I've already read one line, and then need to keep reading again until I reach the end of it. So. Off the top of my head, I can't remember how to establish if we have reached the end of the... I think it just returns false. Yeah, I think it returns false when it's reached the end. Or does it? Oh, for the life of me, I can't remember it. Let me just check how I did it in the other one that I've got here. Yep. 
Yeah, it returns null. That was it, not false. Okay, so what it will do, every time I call read line, it will read the next line from the file. When we've reached the end of the file, it will return null. And that's how we know we've reached the end. So to keep counting this one, so I'm going to say, I've got that, wait there, so I'm going to say int height equals one, because we've already read it once, so we know it's at least one. And then I'm going to say while um, line is not equal to null, keep reading it. Whoops. Now I'm not bothering to store that as anything. All I'm wanting to do is keep reading until I reach the end. And each time I read a line, I'm going to say height plus plus to add one to height. So now it will read a line, add one to height, read a line, add one to height, read a line, add one to height. Eventually it will reach the very last line, which is a null, and then it will stop. So I think actually this will end up with one bigger than the height, but we'll test it. So after that's done, I'm just going to say, let's find how high it thinks this file is. That's not good, I've got stuck in a, lo a loop. Oh, because I have to store it as line, that's why, because otherwise, yeah, it's just taking the same one, my mistake. Yeah, there we are, because otherwise line was never being replaced with null. Try again. There we are. So it thinks it's seven high. Let's check if that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's, it's read the null. When it has read that one, it has been null, it's still added height to it. So if I start, start nine, line at zero, that will fix that problem. So there we are, so I've got the height. So now I've got the width and the height of the map has been read, and I can now properly declare this map. So I'm gonna say, so the width, the x across is going to be uh, Like that. So I'm just going to put some comments in here to keep track of what I'm doing. So I'm going to say, um, and then after it's done that, and successfully declared it, what I'm going to do at this point is say, reader dot close. Some of you may find a better way to do this stuff. Um, but I've not found a more efficient way to get a buffered reader to go back to the start of the file and carry and read it other than just close it and reopen it. So if you find a better way of doing that, feel free to share it. But through my investigation, I found simply closing the file, making a new link to it, is the best way to do it. So, yeah. Um, it's not showing me the numbers of how big my uh, level is. Have you got the sys outs to tell, you, tell it to do that? Uh, I've got the sys dot out dot print line, and then I put height in it. I didn't okay. put your new character width height yet, but before yeah. you did that, it still did the number. Okay, let's have a look. All right, thank you. Yeah, there's a bit I missed out. You're stuck in an infinite loop. The program's still running. So hit the stop button first of all, so it doesn't just keep running forever in the background. Yeah, and oh, on your you. line 19, it needs to say line equals reader dot read line. I made the same mistake first. So r line line equals because you actually need to overwrite the line string. So what line equals? equals that's like it. That. So now it reads it, and oh. if it reads, so in other words, now it can tell if that line is null because it's replaced line with what it's just read. So should I play it? Yeah, that should do it. Oh my god. There we it's go. done it. Alright. Okay. Thank you. Right, so that's pretty much it. That's all we managed to get through. This is going to be slow progress, but it's all we can do. We'll do the best we can. Um, yeah, I think once we've finished off databases, we'll probably do full time on this for a bit and try and get through it. Um, yeah, so with putting that reader got closed in there, as far as we've got now, if I run this, so there's no errors in there, and just to check it's worked, I'm just going to say, 
Um, well, I can't even do that properly yet. So all I've done is I've read through that file, I've found out how wide my map's gonna be, how tall my map's gonna be by reading how many characters in a first line and then how many lines there are. And then that's, then I've created my 2D array to be that size. The next bit we're going to do will be, So now it's going to recreate this. If I'll get it started with this, if some of you want to have a go at it, but I appreciate it's gonna be quite difficult to do. So I'm gonna recreate that file there. And this time I'm going to use a for loop to go through reading each line and then take each character out of that line and put it into the appropriate part of the um, array. So at the end of that, it will have read each line then gone through character by character putting it into the appropriate section of the array so that it can, um, so that my array will then contain the ones and zeros, of the numbers for the map in the appropriate locations. Um, I was hoping to get through all of that this lesson, but it's going to be quite slow going, I think. So we'll do that one um, next Monday. We'll carry on with that. Okay. If um, some of you have reckon you can have a go at this and want to try and see if you can get it to carry on reading the file now and putting them in the array, go for it. But that's what I'll do on Monday's lesson. Uh, Thursday's lesson, I'll do the, the carry on with databases. Okay, we've got any questions about this before we finish? I have an error on my second catch and I can't see why. Okay, show me the screen. It's just there. Yeah, um, you've got an extra closed brace at the end of system to out print line in the far not found exception. You've got a closed brace. Yeah. No, the one above. This one. Yeah, the one now the line above that. There's a closed brace yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, that brace is closing off your um, catch, and then you've done another one which closes off the entire um, method. So that, as far as it knows, that catch is outside of your method. Okay. There we are. So I'd get rid of that brace as well and move it underneath. There it is. Yeah, that should be fine. Once There's nothing obvious wrong there. Nope. Cancel that then. Why is that still got an issue? This is that that print line. Just save it for me. Control S. Oh, that is saved. Hover over that um, semicolon. I can't see anything wrong there. It seems, to, it, like, which you, it seems to want this, and I can't understand why. Which you have. You've got it the line below. That's weird. No, it, it doesn't need to be there. Get, no, get rid of it from... No, there's a world of problems there. Oh, I see. No, no, that's fine. You, you still need to close that one. So get rid of the one you've just put in. This one. That's it, yeah. And there needs to be another closed brace below the there on line 38. Do a closed brace there. There we are. Because that one above needed closing. Yeah, that's... That's it. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right, good stuff. So, if everyone um, is at least doing that, we'll carry on with this on Monday and hopefully we'll sort of pick up the pace a bit once we get into the swing of doing this stuff remotely. So has anyone got any questions? All right, good stuff. I'll see you all on you. Thursday. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks.